Crayford Manor House Astronomical Society has long been recognized as being at the forefront of amateur astronomy. During this program, we'll have a chance to meet some of the members who have helped the Society gain this worthy reputation. First of all, we're going to visit John Wall, a telescope maker, and John's going to tell us something of how the Society was formed, and then he's going to show us some of his telescopes. The history of this observatory goes back to the days of Dr. Welkett, who was the last, possibly the last greatest selenographer. I remember at one astronomy session he said to me, would you like to build an, a telescope for our um, society? Well, it wasn't society in those days, it was uh, just an um, adult education course. I said, yes, as long as I can make a 12 inch. And he was a bit agog at this because in those days 12 inch telescopes were considered to be very big. Anyway, this used to be an old boiler house here and uh, we got a grant from the local council to have it all stripped off and this building put up by a, a tame architect who also took the astronomy course and I was given about 250 pounds to build a 12 inch telescope and uh, I built this telescope in due course and installed it in the observatory and we ran this telescope right up until the days of um, Gordon Taylor when he took over from Dr Wilkins, Dr Wilkins having died and uh, we ran that telescope for, for about 15 years until literally we wore it out. Then for a while I had a small 9 inch catagrain on the mounting and we used that for a while and then the uh, principal of the centre said we've got a big grant to improve our observatory but seeing as you're not terribly interested in the telescope anymore uh, we're thinking not of giving it to you, you see. So I said, well, I'll tell you what I'll do. If you give us the grant, I'll build a 24-inch telescope and install it in the observatory for you. And you can have it on permanent loan. And by that means, we secured the grant to improve the observatory. Now, the Crayford Astronomical Society started with Gordon Taylor, and he came along to one of our sessions, and he said, it's about time you had an astronomical society. And we said, oh, that's a good idea. So he founded the society, and from that moment on, we've sort of blossomed into the sort of organisation we are today. But in 1976, I started building the telescope, and it took me 18 months. I'd already finished the optics about a year before, and Frankly speaking, I was going to build a 24-inch telescope for myself, but I didn't have room in the garden to put it anywhere. And this was an excellent opportunity to put it over here. And I built it, and through that long golden summer of 1976, I assembled it in the observatory here, and it was officially opened about a year later. Now we'll go inside and I'll describe the telescope. Before I talk about the 24 inch, I may as well describe what we've got in here. We've got two more telescopes. This one is a 6 inch Cassegrainian, standard Cassegrainian telescope, which we use for solar work, projecting the sun on the screen down here, which is not attached at the moment, and for normal observation of the sky. And over here, we have an 8 inch refracting telescope, which is very short focus which we use for sweeping the sky for deep sky objects and comets. It's very low powered, it only magnifies about 44 times, but it gives excellent deep sky views. We can see nebulae and gaseous clouds and extended objects and star fields through that one. That's very useful for looking for very faint objects. Right, now I'll talk about the 24 inch. 24 inch telescope. It was um, intrinsically a short focus category, the whole focal ratio only being about f7. The idea behind the telescope is to use it for deep sky work, comet sweeping, and such like. And even though it's a low power telescope, it's very successful for observation because being a big telescope, it's still got quite a long focal length and we get reasonably high magnification with it. Now, 
telescope, of course, of this type has the main mirror, the primary mirror, down here in this cell. And we have a secondary mirror up there, in that behind that orange plate, which reflects the light back down to a third mirror in here, which shoots it out through a set of mirrors here to the eyepiece here. And this is the actual eyepiece mount. The eyepiece mount is the Crayford eyepiece mount, which was invented by me uh, several years ago, back in the 70s, and uh, which is now more or less known all over the world. The Americans are very fond of the Crayford eyepiece mount, and you'll see these on telescopes in the Sky and Telescope, for instance. Here is another Crayford eyepiece mount on here, attached to this piece of apparatus, which is a Guide guiding telescope, which is placed transversely across the frame, and it is a three inch refractor uh, with a one meter focal length with which we can guide the telescope doing photography. A camera being placed on here, and the observer looking through there, and using this controller, we can keep a star, any star, in the field that we want on a fiducial graticle and using the joystick we can guide the telescope on the star making sure that the, there is no drift in the drive. The um, mounting here is designed so that the eyepiece can be moved on an X and Y axis so that we can select another star in the field and lock the telescope on it. Now, this telescope has been used for visual work up till now, but eventually we'll be using it for photography and for photoelectric photometry. And the reason why this was being added, this was added this year, was to update the telescope so it can be used for photoelectric photometry. It was at its time, when it was built in 1976, one of the largest telescopes in this country. Uh, this has, we sort of set a trend amongst other astronomical societies and they began to churn out 24 inch telescopes of their own. So we sort of set a trend for big telescopes in the country. And uh, it's no longer the biggest in the country, but I have jumped the gun there and I'm building bigger telescopes, which will be the biggest telescopes in the country. We'll talk about that one another time. The um, frame is the uh, standard Saussure truss frame which is used on big professional telescopes. It makes for an elegant design and for a very rigid construction. There is only one way to make a telescope frame and that's to use this system. The telescope is fork mounted. The fork is very strong, made from sheet metal fastened to angle framing and the skin is fastened completely all round making a stiff box structure. It's rather like um, an aircraft wing spar. It's extremely stiff and very light. The whole fork can be lifted by one person whereas a conventional casting would probably weigh half a ton. Well that's all I can say about the telescope. This is Crayford's um, primary instrument, but we have other instruments out in the field doing other work, and uh, it's by no means the largest telescope in Crayford society. I have um, recently completed a 32-inch telescope on a similar mounting, which will be used purely for photoelectric photometry, and not so much for visual work. With that, one hopes to do real science and um, we're waiting for clear nights this winter to commission the telescope and to test out all systems. That telescope took about four years to build and is at the moment the largest, probably the largest uh, amateur-owned telescope in this country. It will be part of the Crawford, uh, Crawford Group's um, instrumentation, possibly, although originally it was built for a customer who was going out to Cyprus and uh, that particular um, project failed, so we are having it. 
Furthermore, the, th the um, story doesn't stop at the 32 inch. I'm um, just completed design drawings and uh, for a 48 inch and um, I've laid the base foundation for that and we shall be seeing that when we go down to my place to see the 32 inch and the site for the 48 inch. Thank you, John. John will be back later in the program. Meantime, let's go down to Trossley in Kent, to the home of Malcolm Goff. Malcolm's going to tell us something about the Jack L's APT. This is the Jack L's automatic photoelectric photometer. Jack was a founder member of Crayford Astronomical Society um, and in later life his abiding interest was in eclipsing binary stars. This telescope was specifically built by Jack and his son Peter to observe eclipsing binary stars. The telescope is capable of, of professional quality work and as well as eclipsing binary stars it will also look at asteroids for establishing light curves. We also look at symbiotic stars and stars of special interest for professional astronomers. At the moment we are engaged in collaborative programs with astronomers at Southampton University, Cambridge University and the Rutherford Appleton Laboratory. The telescope is on loan to Crayford Manor House Astronomical Society from the Ells family at this time. The telescope is a standard Newtonian, 8.5 inch f4, which gives us a one degree field at the eyepiece, which makes for ease of acquiring the stars to be examined. The photometer head at the eyepiece here is a Jeep designed by Norman Walker and was built specifically for Jack by Norman. This is the, is the light guide that takes the photons from the photometer head actually into the electronics which are in, in the bottom of the trolley there and the photometer tube is also in the bottom of the trolley. The telescope has a fairly novel uh, amateur feature I think in that it has a rotating turret head which makes for ease of setting up the telescope. The telescope also has very large setting circles which again make for ease of setting up, together with the computer program that Peter um, wrote that gives you local hour angles, all makes for, for very easy setting up of the telescope. The, the drives are controlled from the computer, two, st two stepper drive motors, one on declination and one on right ascension, controlled through these two cables from the trolley. The control gear is actually a BBCB computer which is perfectly adequate for the job although it is fairly old now. Um, twin disk drives and there's a button box in here which I will show you for interest which is used when setting up the telescope on the stars to be observed. power supply at the bottom of the trolley here is the power supply for the electronics, the photometer electronics. It runs about 940 volts. Well, that's all from Trosley. I'll now hand you back to John Wall.
1965, I built this telescope here. This was my first really big telescope after the 12 inch. I had made several telescopes before, then finally decided on the big one. Now in 1965, a 20 inch telescope was considered to be quite a large telescope for amateurs. This telescope is an altazimuth, not an equatorially mounted telescope, and principally I designed it for viewing the sun. That meant that the mirror in here was unmetallized, unilluminized if you like, so that I could view the sun directly. Up there is a secondary mirror and uh, a module which goes into a ring fixed to the tube there. The module is indoors. Now that module contained light loss systems which further dumped sunlight so that I could view the sun directly. And with this telescope I carried out solar observations for many years until finally I became more interested in telescope making rather than solar observations. Then I built this refractor. This is a unique refractor. It's 10 inches aperture. Unique in as much as it's a dialite telescope. Very unusual kind of telescope, which is very experimental. It was invented in the Victorian era, and I resurrected it. It really comprises a single element lens up the top there, which is made of crown glass, and a piece of flint glass corrector situated about here. There's a flat mirror down here which shoots the light back up to the eyepiece here. And with this telescope I observe the moon. And it's an extremely powerful telescope. And one gets beautiful views of the lunar terrain through this. Well, we will now go on to the 32 inch telescope, which is now the largest telescope I've built so far. And it is over here. This is the 32-inch telescope. It's possibly the largest amateur-owned telescope in the country. It took me four years to build and about a year and a half to make the optics. I made the optics about 10 years ago for a similar telescope that I built on this site, which was an Altazimuth telescope, very similar to the 20-inch over there. That telescope was fairly unsuccessful as I had problems with the azimuth bearing and I decided to totally dismantle it and redesign the telescope as an equatorial. So actually I've built two 32 inch telescopes but the optics are the same for both telescopes. The main mirror is contained in this cell here, 32 inch mirror, and there is a 16 and a half inch optical flat up at that end which cuts the focal length in half. It's a folded telescope so that the focal plane comes back towards the mirror about here. It is diverted by a tertiary mirror here to an observing station here and at the moment I've got a, an eyepiece in here mounted on a Crayford eyepiece mount. At this position, we will be mounting photoelectric photometry instruments and later on a spectroscope. And with this telescope, it is proposed to do scientific observations rather than visual observations. And we can determine the light levels of variable stars and such and get their spectra. Eventually this telescope will be dismantled and taken out to a proper observing site. This garden is next to a motorway and we have glorious motorway lights over here which make astronomical observation impossible at this site. A little bit about the telescope. Mounting. The mounting is a fork mounting and uh, which is the best possible design for this kind of telescope. It's driven in sidereal rate and it has slew rates which allow the telescope to be positioned from one star to another for comparison sky, comparison star, comparison star and the observed, observed star. 
Down there, there is a, an instrument box which contains the electrics and relays and such, which allow the telescope to be driven in all its modes, operating drive motors and magnetic clutches, and the whole is controlled by a simple key box here. We have setting circles for finding positions on here and there, this being the declination circle, that being the sidereal circle there, and a finder here. Well, that's possibly all I can say about this. Once again, we thank John. And now we're going to Hadlow in Kent to visit Roger Pickard, who's going to tell us about his work. I've been observing for over 30 years now, mainly variable stars throughout that time, and I've been a member for Crayford Manor House Astronomical Society for almost as long, having joined in January 1966. That's 26 years. During that time, my interest has progressed from just observing variable stars visually to using a technique that we call photoelectric photometry, or PEP, and that's what this telescope that you're about to see is set up to use. So we'll now open up the telescope and we'll see exactly what it looks like. Thank you. So now we have the telescope wheeled out and we're ready to observe. It's a standard Newtonian telescope. The mirror is down here. It's a 16-inch mirror, so fairly large for amateur, by amateur standards, uh, which brings the light to a focus up here where we put our normal eyepiece and we have our standard Crayford eyepiece mount to, to do the focusing. However, my particular interests uh, during the 1980s moved from ordinary, straightforward var visual variable star observing to photoelectric photometry and nowadays I replace that eyepiece having found the particular star that I want to observe with a photomultiplier which you can consider really as a more sophisticated camera light meter. It's the same sort of principle. But so instead of looking through the eyepiece you have this photometer and these wires are connected to the photometer and the signal is taken down here to some of this sophisticated electronics. A power supply delivering about 1500 volts, fortunately at a very low current so it's not too dangerous, and other amplifying instrumentation down there which is then further taken away to a, uh, to a computer for, uh, for later measurement and analysis. Also down here we have a stepper motor control box Stepper motors again controlled via the same computer when it's connected up and through to stepper motors, one of which would normally be situated down there, but for the moment it's been taken away for further improvement. The whole telescope was originally built for me by John Wall back in the n early 1980s as far as the tube was concerned, mainly for visual work on a, a mounting of my own construction. This proved to be unsatisfactory. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't capable of tracking sufficiently well for photoelectric photometry. And so John, in the late 1980s, built the whole of the mount for me, with the exception of this trolley, which you see it, it was wheeled out on, which was built for me by Malcolm Goff. It's a very short focal ratio telescope, 16-inch diameter, as I say, but 
3.75 is the focal ratio, so multiply 16 inches by 3.75 and you get a focal length of just 60 inches. As I mentioned just now, the stepper motors are away, or not the stepper motors themselves, but the drive gear really is away for improvement by John Wall, because although when he originally built it, I was really going to use it for, for manual operation in the photoelectric mode, uh, it was about the same sort of time that I, that Jack Earls, late member of our society, also built his automatic photoelectric telescope. And once set up, this telescope can observe for you all night. And once again, it's fed into a computer and you take the results and analyze them in the comfort of your own home at a later date. This, to me, sounded the ideal way to observe. You could just go out, set the telescope up, and then leave the thing alone, and you didn't have to be out there getting really cold. Unfortunately, this telescope's drive system was not quite accurate enough for that work, as tests proved. It has worked perfectly well in the manual mode, and I've got some good results. But, as I say, I wanted to get it operating in the automatic mode. So John, at the moment, is doing those improvements for me, and I'm hoping that very, very soon now it'll be operating in the automatic mode, just as the telescope at, uh, at Trosley is. Of course, I, I didn't start life with a 16-inch telescope and sophisticated electronic gear. I actually started life with a, a dear little 8.5-inch telescope back here, which I used for many years very successfully and now use for grazing occultations. Uh, but that one is only used very occasionally. Uh, so that sums it up here from Hadlow, and I'll hand you back to John Wall. Thank you. Um, here we have a, a model of the proposed 48-inch telescope. It's a uh, one-fifth full-size scale, which means that the mirror, which will go in here, is in yet. The uh, model mirror is nine and a half inches in diameter, and that is uh, a fair size for an amateur telescope, just for a model. It's an alt azimuth instrument, as you can see, and it has drive units on here and in here in the base, and there will be computer controlled so that the telescope will track a star sidereally across the sky like this. On this side, we have the observing station here, which is a Crayford Actress mounting, and a finder in a box here. Now, the design of this telescope is that it can stand outside in the weather. There is no dome for it. Uh, the 20 inch that you saw earlier, that was also designed to stand out in the weather, and that's been out in the weather for getting on well, since 1965, so it's a, it's a very successful system to use. It has a very simplified tube structure. The big secondary is at the top here. The light will come to the side, this side, and come out to, to, to a tertiary mirror here, and come out through the eyepiece here. These four booms here will form an actual cross configuration on the mirror. The vignetting effect will do that. Um, the model was built, of course, to prove out all the engineering drawings that they've done to design the telescope. And this project is now coming to an end, and I shall start building the telescope soon. And now we go back to the manor house, where John Howarth is going to talk about the Hewitt Camera Archive. Welcome to Crayford Manor House. You see around you the Hewitt Camera Archive. This archive was produced by the Royal Greenwich Observatory and various other organisations and consists of about 11,000 plates. These plates down the side here are glass plates and the plates on the shelves here are made of plastic film. The machine that you see in the centre here is the Zeiss plate measuring machine, also provided by the Royal Greenwich Observatory. A plate is taken and placed in this rack in the centre. It can then be moved around left and right and backwards and forwards underneath this scanning head. 
and a, a small image of the plate is then transferred optically up into these binoculars and by looking through here one can see a very small part of the plate at a time. As the plate moves around it also presses against two scales the x-axis that you see here and the y-axis which is over the other side and in doing so using the binocular microscope again it's possible to measure very accurately the positions of stars on the plate. When this information has been obtained, it is necessary to perform the calculations to work out the star position. This can be done using the computer, which you see across here. This computer contains in it details of about a quarter of a million stars obtained from the SAO catalogue. It also contains software for the processing of the plates and a complete index of all the Hewitt camera plates. I should add that the computer was provided by the kindness of the BAA. Finally, can I pass you over once again and for the last time to John Wall. Right, this is um the optical bench which I've got set up in a laboratory here. Um, this module is on the bench for testing purposes and we have a illuminated source here, artificial star source here, and a relay lens which feeds light into the system at the same focal ratio as the 32 inch telescope outside. And we have here a beam splitting arrangement so that one can view the star which is being examined, and at the same time, light from that star is coming down this optical link to a module, which will be placed on the base of the observatory, on the, on the base of the telescope or the observatory floor. And um, while the um, light is being collected, there's a very sophisticated arrangement in here which splits the light two ways. There is a fiducial in there which um, blocks the star out so that the star disappears while you're looking at it. That means then that the light is going down the optical fibre. If the, if the star reappears, you have to adjust the telescope to make it disappear again. It's as simple as that. That is the only equipment that we've built so far for the 32 inch. There will be a box of tricks containing photo electric um, tubes and amplifying systems and um, uh, computer interface and such later on. Also this telescope will probably be fitted for CCD work and definitely for spectroscopy. A similar system, perhaps this, this head here will be used also to feed light to a, a spectroscope so that we can also analyse uh, the variable stars spectroscopically as well as measure their light levels. Well, that just about concludes our programme, and I hope you've enjoyed it. I think you'll agree that Crayford members approach their interest with a high degree of enthusiasm and expertise. Of course, there's a lot more going on at the Manor House, and you're welcome to pop in and see for yourself. Or if you'd like more details, we'll give you a phone number at the end of the program. Thanks for joining us. Three, two, one. I've gone silly. <laughs> I couldn't think of what to say. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Isn't it stupid? <laughs> we'll try again. Three, three, two, one. Welcome to Crayford Manor House. You see around you the Hewitt Camera Archive. This consists of about 11,000 plates 
taken in the UK and in Australia. It was they were produced originally, but from the. <laughs> Sorry, can you start again? Yeah. Okay. Three, two, one. Crayford Astronomical Society has long been. Oh, hang on. <laughs> Crayford Manor House Astronomical Society. <laughs> right. Let's go again. One. Thank you, John. Once again. No, sorry. <laughs> Once again, thanks, John. Hadlow Kent, Roger Pickard. That's right. Hadlow Kent. Three, two, one. Okay. Three, two, one. We now go back to the manor house where John Howard is going to talk. Hang on. Howarth Hewitt. Howarth and Hewitt. Back to the manor house where John Howarth is going to talk about the Hewitt, Hewitt camera archive. You have to have a couple of shots at this one after, if you don't mind. Okay. All right. Three, two, one. Well, that concludes our program. I think you'll agree that Crayford members approach their interest with an... Oh, fuck me. Sorry. <sighs> Dribbling the eyes here. They approach their interest with a high degree of enthusiasm and expertise. Let's try that one again. Sorry about that. Right, three, two, one. Well, that concludes our program. I think you'll agree that the Crayford members approach their interests with an enthusiasm and an expertise <sighs> with a high degree of I was looking for something to finish it. High degree of enthusiasm and expertise. Oh, let's try this again then. Three, two, one. Well that just about concludes our programme. I think you'll agree that Crayford members approach their interests with a high degree of enthusiasm and expertise. There is, of course, a lot more going on at the Manor House, and you're welcome to drop in and have a look for yourself. Or you can phone the number we'll give you at the end of this program for more details. <laughs> yes, that would have been, that would have been fine. Yes. All right, we'll try it again. <coughs> okay. This is the photometer head. It's a Jeep design, designed by Norman. I've forgotten his name. <laughs> Two, one. This is the photometer head. It's a Jeep design, designed by Norman Walker and built for Jack. Well, that really does conclude our programme. I would just like to thank those people taking part. That is John Wall. Malcolm Goff, Roger Pickard, John Howarth, and of course our presenter, Steve Thompson. And of course, don't forget to come along to Crayford Manor House. You will be mo made most welcome.